Mayor Lambert, City Council members, <coughs> thank you for having me. Steve Bonner, Sojourners Alliance Executive Director, 627 North Van Buren. Uh, just a little bit of the background to this. Uh, I'm a, the regional representative for the Housing Coalition, which means I'm a voting board member for the state. At our uh, state meeting in October, an undersecretary of HUD was there presented to us that as housing went with HUD, that transitional housing would be going by the wayside over time. No indication was given to us that it was going to happen as quickly as it did. At our state meeting just a few weeks ago, uh, nothing was mentioned. IHFA, Idaho Housing Finance Association, was not aware that uh, our funding was in imminent danger. When we were notified uh, two weeks ago today, it gave us 20 working days in which to adjust our budget, uh, which our grant cycle would have begun June 1st. So with 20 days remaining in the month, trying to find initial finances to keep the place open long enough for the, the participants I have living there to transition out, hopefully, into their own housing. Uh, I've been able to raise enough money in the last two weeks, um, approximately $37,000. Uh, but at that point, the end of August, uh, unless something changes, we will be closed. Uh, we're now looking at long term. I, I met with uh, county commissioners from the whole region uh, last week, again talked to our county commissioners. This is really a regional problem if we close down. Um, currently, in the calendar year of 2015, we helped 114 people come through our program. Uh, typically, my on-site program, uh, we can house up to 23 individuals, and most times we're full. Uh, just in the last two weeks, I've turned away over 20 households in just the last two weeks. Uh, so the void, if our services are gone, are not only going to impact the city of Moscow, but Latah County and the region. I've been asked about where people come from. About 25% of the population we serve comes from Lewiston, Clarkston Valley. About 10% comes from the other outlying areas, but then the rest come from Moscow. Um, and that's basically what I know as of right now. Um, the, Idaho Housing, we have a foundation. They uh, are going to provide a, a moving stipend for each of our participants, which I have 16 on site right now, uh, $350, and we'll pay for a deposit. My problem with that is currently I have eight people that have filed for Social Security disability. Uh, they are not able to work. They have no income. So <coughs> they can get a Section 8 voucher. HUD is giving a waiver so all my participants can go at the top of the list and get a Section 8 voucher. But without any income, they would not be able to afford the rents even if provided that voucher. So it's kind of a catch-22. And then we have these households that are, will move out prematurely, and where's the furnishing that's going to help them the house beds, dressers, etc. So it's kind of daunting in that aspect for my participants. As far as my organization goes, it either, will either come out of this stronger or we will be closed. There's not going to be any halfway in between. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. Questions? Steve, this was uh, federal funding. That Correct. Yeah. It was a HUD grant of uh, 77000 Then Idaho Housing did a match with us that brought it up to about 100000 So that's off the table. Okay. Jim? So, Steve, when um, you, you said that you had to turn away 20 people that needed housing um, in the 20 last households. Um, uh, two of them were families living in cars. Um, uh, I can go on and on. So the actual number is more than 20, but we, call, we consider it a household, whether it's one person or five people. So when you, when you have to turn these people away, they just go live in their car then? Correct. They, you have no... There's no alternative, no other place you can send them where they can get uh, something transitional until they can get nope. into the new program? Or? Closest is Coeur d'Alene or Spokane, as far as housing goes. We can refer them to St. Vincent's for maybe one or two nights. It is a voucher in a motel. Real Life Ministries as well might put them up in a motel for one or two nights, but that's the extent of any kind of help that's available to them. Walter. Hi, Steve. Hi, Walter. It's been a long time since we fixed a, fixed a bathroom <laughs> with you, but we got that done. Yes, we did. What? Are you here asking for something? And if so, what is it? Well, actually, no, not at this point. It's uh, inform informational. 
My hope is, and I appreciate the question, I've been contacted by Senator Schmidt, uh, Representative Troy, a number of other folks within the community. What I intend on doing is bringing a meeting together of the, the, these minds in a couple of weeks and just brainstorm, you know, what are solutions out there? Does the community want a homeless shelter? What are the needs so that I'm not driving it, but it's a community-based decision of what we do? Um, and that's my intention of taking this forward, is I'm not here asking for money right now. I'm just here to impart the information and knowledge that I have as of right now. Okay, thank you. You're, you're welcome. Yeah, um, you said you got some what amounts to bridge funding to take you about through August. After we get to August, um, I assume you'll be looking for other potential longer-term sources of funding. Are there any out there, and yes, what are there, the chances? Yes, there is one that popped up real quick. Within uh, three days, uh, Department of Corrections contacted me and asked me if we were interested in housing felons coming directly out of prison. Uh, the rate of pay is pretty decent, uh, but that's an issue that we provide housing for the homeless. That's a whole other population that at this point I'm not, not really interested in. My board would have to be, make the decision, but I can tell you we've already discussed it, and I don't think they're real open to that. Uh, that would be a bailout because we've struggled. I mean, I, I've been in my position almost 10 years now. And uh, over the last 10 years, uh, I've had to absorb positions to maintain us uh, to the tune of $60,000 in layoffs while I do double duty. Uh, between my office manager and myself, we've given up over 30000 over our own pockets to keep the place going. So in a way, this is whatever God is. This is a godsend. Either we get out of this rut and the spiral we've been in, we, we're stronger, better for it, or we're closed. Um, I believe in what our mission is and the services that we provide. But again, this is not just a Moscow, Latah County. This is a regional issue. And that's where I'm hoping, if it's important enough, people within our region will step up and have solutions or answers that how we might fit uh, the future. Catherine? So you've, you've said you've already met with some of the commissioners around. And so um, <laughs> what are you hearing? Well, um, they, the Behavioral Health Board is where all the uh, county commissioners get together dealing with mental health issues and substance abuse. And they have a housing committee. And so um, Scott Douglas, who is the chair of that meeting, he and I are arranging a meeting to get together to discuss how we might uh, create some partnerships outside of DOC as well. So, so at least the, all five re counties in our region are aware of what's going on, other than what's in the paper. Well, you know, Stephen, I'm, I'm glad you got a chance to come up here and tell us really what was going on, and you know, besides what we've heard through other folks and reading it in the paper and stuff, so we know exactly. Uh, and it's good for the community Absolutely. to get a chance to see this as well. The, the amount, if I may, just one more thing. The amount that I put out there, what we needed to keep our doors open to through August, is bare bones. Uh, I'm actually in a staffing pattern. I would have a full-time case manager and a part-time case manager. Um, those are vacant right now because I was actually going to do some hiring last week. Um, but because of this, I had to hold off. So I'm absorbing both positions, which are a total of 64 hours a week, on top of my duties as executive director to see this ship through. And we're hopeful, uh, Mayor Lampert, uh, now that I've got the immediate crisis done, now we can focus on what our future could look like and what our community wants of us. I, I believe we are a part of the solution. When, of course, <laughs> when I first started there, we were part of the problem. <laughs> yeah. yes. One more thing. Uh, my um, impression of uh, the federal take on this is that they're, they're taking this funding away and they're trying to get people into more permanent housing immediately instead of the transitional, instead Correct. of funding the transitional thing? Yes. And do, will that, do you see that to be in place by August? Oh, well, I'll have $27,000 available come October 1st, but I could spend that in two months. I mean, I've had those funds before. And I, I, I have issue, and appreciate the question, because this is a kind of an educational opportunity as well. Uh, we had rapid rehousing funds back when we called Obama, Obama bucks, the federal stimulus money. And during that time, uh, we helped 109 households in 15 months that were homeless, et cetera. What we saw was about 90% of that population were normal working people who had cutbacks, medical issues, uh, reduction of hours, et cetera. 10% were those that were system users and abusers. And that same 10% we have seen again. 
the data that's supporting shifting to rapid rehousing is based on that time through the uh, Obama, uh, Obama's economic stimulus funds. So I, I don't see it that way because the individuals I have need more structure than that. I look at the folks I have currently right now, and maybe about three of the individuals would thrive on having a deposit and maybe three months' worth of rent and go on their merry way. Uh, the folks we have come in have massive barriers uh, in their lives that have led them to coming to us. So to give them just, here's some housing, we'll give you a little support, and then you go on your way, that really caters more towards a normal working individual that has stability in their life and just has hit hard times. That's just my own professional opinion, though. Thank you. Well, thank you, Steve. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Best wishes for Thank you. you.